direction and rate of fluid exchange between capillary blood and interstitial fluid is determined in part by the balance between the hydrostatic pressure denoted by PC in the capillaries which promotes the movement of fluid out of capillaries and the colloid osmotic pressure of plasma denoted by COP which favors the movement of fluid into the capillaries. In the supine position, the normal PC, that is hydrostatic pressure, averages about 20 mm of mercury. And the normal COP, that is colloid osmotic pressure of plasma, is about 28 mm of mercury. So the net forces normally favor the movement of fluid into capillaries, which preserves the plasma volume. About 80% of plasma COP, colloid oncotic pressure, is due to the albumin fraction of plasma proteins. So, if the plasma albumin concentration is low, the COP will be reduced and fluid will move from the capillaries into the interstitium, causing edema. So edema is a very common finding in persons with hypoalbuminemia. Now, when you look at the intravenous fluids, the crystalloids like lactated ringers and the normal saline have small molecules so they can move easily from the plasma into the interstitium in fact 75 percent of the volume administered move into the interstitium and only about 25 percent stays inside the vasculature colloidal solutions like albumin and hes on the other hand have large solute molecules that do not pass readily from plasma to the interstitium. The retained molecules in a colloid fluid create an osmotic force called the colloid osmotic pressure that holds water in the vascular compartment. Colloidal fluids with a COP, that is colloid osmotic pressure, of 20 to 30 millimeter of mercury are considered to be iso-oncotic fluids because they have the same COP as that of a normal plasma COP that is 28 millimeter of mercury. So whenever we administer iso-oncotic fluids they produce increments in plasma volume that are roughly equivalent to the infusate volume. That is, if 100 ml of isooncotic colloid fluid is infused, it will produce increased in plasma volume by the same 100 ml. Colloid fluids with a COP of more than 30 mm of mercury are hyperoncotic fluids, meaning their COP is more than that of the plasma COP and these fluids produce increments in plasma volume that are usually greater than the infusate volume. This is most apparent with 25% albumin which has a COP of 70 mm of mercury and produces an increment in plasma volume that is 3 to 4 times greater than the infusate volume, meaning if we give 100 ml of 25% albumin, then the plasma volume will be increased by 400 ml. Now looking into the albumin solutions, they are the principal determinant of plasma COP. They are the principal transport protein in blood. They have significant antioxidant activity and helps maintain the fluidity of blood by inhibiting platelet aggregation. 
Two thirds of the albumin in the body is located outside blood vessels. Their role is unclear. Now, albumin solutions are heat treated preparations of human serum albumin that are available as a 5% solution and a 25% solution in 0.9% sodium chloride. The 5% albumin solution is usually given in aliquots of 250 ml. The colloid osmotic press uh, is 20 mm of mercury and the plasma volume increment averages 100% of the infused volume. Now the 25% albumin solution is a hyper oncotic fluid with a colloid osmotic pressure of 70 mm of mercury which is more than twice that of plasma it is given in aliquots of 50 to 100 ml and the plasma volume increment is three to four times the infusate volume the three to four times increase is due to fluid shift from the interstitial space so Interstitial fluid volume decreases as plasma volume increases because it does not replace lost volume but instead shift fluid from one compartment to another. 25% albumin should not be used for volume resuscitation in patients with blood loss. This fluid should be reserved for instances where hypovolemia is the result of hypoalbuminemia which promotes fluid shift from plasma to interstitial fluid. The consensus opinion at the present time is that 5% albumin is safe to use as a resuscitation fluid except possibly in traumatic head injury where one large study has shown a higher mortality rate in patients who received albumin instead of isotonic saline. Hyperoncotic albumin has been associated with an increased risk of renal injury and death in patients with circulatory shock, which is similar to the renal injury reported with other hyperoncotic colloid fluids. Now, coming to the dextran solutions. The two most common dextran preparations are 10% dextran 40 and 6% dextran 70. Each preparation using 0.9% sodium chloride as a diluent. Both dextran preparations have a colloid osmotic pressure of 40 mm of mercury and cause a greater increase in plasma volume than either 5% albumin or 6% heterostrach. Dextran 7T may be preferred because the duration of action, which is about 12 hours, is longer than that of Dextran 40, which has a duration of action of around 6 hours. Dextrans produce a dose related bleeding tendency that involves impaired platelet aggregation, decreased levels of factor 8 and von Willebrand factor and enhance fibrinolysis. The hemostatic defects are minimized by limiting the daily dextran dose to 20 ml per kg. The dextrans coat the surface of red blood cells and can interfere with the ability to cross-match blood. Red cell preparations must be washed to eliminate this problem in patients receiving dextrans. The dextrans also increase the ESR as a result of their interactions with red blood cells and they have been associated with an osmotically mediated renal injury similar to that observed with HES preparations. However, this complication occurs only rarely with dextran infusions. Anaphylactic reactions once common with dextrans are now reported in only 
0.03% of infusions. The hydroxy ethyl starch, or simply HES, on the other hand, is a chemically modified polysaccharide composed of long chains of branch glucose polymers substituted periodically by hydroxyl radicals which resist enzymatic degradation HES elimination involves hydrolysis by amylase enzymes in the bloodstream which cleave the parent molecule until it is small enough to be cleared by the kidneys the following is a summary of the important features of HES preparations HES preparations are classified as high molecular weight 450 kilodaltons medium molecular weight of 200 kilodaltons and low molecular weight of 70 kilodaltons high molecular weight preparations have a prolonged duration of action because amylase cleavage results in progressively smaller molecules that are osmotically active when the cleavage products reach a molecular weight of 50 kilodalton they can be cleared by the kidneys HES preparations are also classified by the ratio of hydroxyl radical substitutions per glucose polymer which is called the molar substitution ratio and ranges from 0 to 1 since hydroxyl radicals resist enzymatic degradation higher OH by glucose ratios are associated with prolonged activity higher molar substitution ratios increase the risk of HES associated coagulopathy most preparations are available as 6% solutions in 0.9% sodium chloride the prefix of the HES preparation indicates the molar substitution ratio example penta starch is equal to 0.5 tetra starch is equal to 0.4 heta starch is the most commonly used HES preparations in the United States and has a high molecular weight of 450 kilodalton and high molar substitution ratio of 0 0.7 the thrust starch is the most recent HES preparation introduced for use in the United States and has the lowest molecular weight of 130 kilodalton and the lowest molar substitution ratio of 0.4 the thrust starch is available as voluven the performance of 6 person HES solutions as plasma volume expanders is very similar to 5 person albumin. The oncotic pressure is higher than 5 person albumin and the increment in plasma volume can be higher as well. The effect on plasma volume can last up to 24 hours with high molecular weight preparations such as heater starts. The duration of action of the lower molecular weight preparation is at least 6 hours but effect begin to dissipate within 1 hour. The colloid solutions, especially the HES, that is hydroxyethyl starch, have some complications that limit their use as fluid replacement. One of the most significant complications is altered hemostasis. Now, hydroxyethyl starch can impair hemostasis by inhibition of factor 7, von Willebrand factor, and impair platelet adhesiveness. This effect was originally attributed to high molecular weight preparations, but high molar ratios are now considered more important in determining the risk of altered hemostasis. Clinically significant coagulopathies are uncommon 
unless large volumes of HES are infused. Example, more than 50 ml per kg for Detra starts. The second important complication is nephrotoxicity. Several studies have shown an association between HES infusions and an increased risk of renal injury and death. This association has been reported with hetastars, pentastars, and tetrastars. The colloid osmotic pressure of HES preparations 30 mm of mercury for hetastars, 36 for tetrastars has been implicated in renal injury although the precise mechanism is not clear. HES-associated renal injury has been reported mostly in patients with life-threatening conditions such as severe sepsis and circulatory shock. Another complication is hyperamylasemia. The amylase enzymes involved in the hydrolysis of HES attached to the HES molecules and this reduces amylase clearance by the kidneys. This can result in an increase in serum amylase levels to two to three times above normal. Levels usually return to normal within one week after HES is discontinued. Serum lipase levels are unaffected by HES infusions. Thank you.